Okay, so an extension of the previous lecture about splines is simply the uh, 3D uh, version of, of splines. How this uh, could look like is illustrated again from uh, a graphics, a figure here, probably from a paper from the 90s, where, well, this teapot is, is potentially not uh, represented by a polyhedra, by triangles or something like that, but apparently the... Uh, surface here at the outline is defined by something continuous so ap apparently an overall representation of that teapot and how can we do this well again we can we can do the same uh, route of argumentation like for the 2d uh, splines <laughs> so we can first ask the question is there a non-parametric surface representation for this and surfaces can be well constructed directly from cartesian equations like we did for the uh, for the splines and this is acceptable for very specific applications uh usually involving some sort of interpolation so for example a terrain map can be just encoded as x y and z coordinates with some sort of polynomial on top if you want as interpolation so as before using a simple polynomial surface is, is a quick and easy approach here. So I can come up with a non-parametric polynomial surface in X, Y, and Z here. So in this case here in 3D, I need uh, 16 parameters, uh, scalar parameters here to work out this polynomial. And this can be multiplied out to this quite monstrous um, equation here. So because of the symmetry, there are nine scalar unknowns in this equation. So the symmetry actually allows you to only work this out from nine. So we need to specify nine points at least to get a surface that will uh, fit that bill here so that I can get for every X, Y, and Z coordinate. Um, so that I can solve this for X, Y, and Z, and for example, get for every X and Y coordinate a Z coordinate out. So this, this formulation suffers basically the same problems as non-parametric spline curves. It is a fixed surface with a set of nine points. I cannot model details with things like that. I also have the problem of uh, ambiguities. Uh, if, if one of the coordinates is supposed to produce more than one um, uh, curve point, then this doesn't work anymore. So we need more flexibility for the design of really nice surfaces. And a way to do this is to extend the formulation we had already for uh, parametric surfaces using uh, the vector equations from before. So we again try to find parameters with which we can characterize this, this uh, any surface. So before, in the last lecture, we tried to characterize a, a, a smooth line that required one parameter, which I scale per I declare I scale this parameter between 0 and 1, for example. Now, a surface can be defined in two directions, right? If you imagine you're glued to the surface and can move and you cannot jump, then what you can do is you can move left, right, forward, backward, all of these combinations. So we need two parameters now uh, for this setup. And we call them simply mu and nu. <clears throat> so this is Greek. This is a mu. And this, I was told, is a new. Okay. <clears throat> so I won't call it V here. It's just a new. So set, plugging this in in a vector formulation, I get again unknown parameters now here in vector form. They are bold phase, so this means all of them are vectors. And if I multiply them out into our polynomial here in quadratic form, I see where all of these uh, polynomials land. So we have one for mu and one for new. Uh, there are basically six unknown vector parameters for uh, a, a patch that would be similar like a spline patch. So we can solve for the six vectors that are unknown by really substituting six points. And I need six points here to, um, to make this work. And again, as before, I would make some assumptions and some definitions here. So for example, I would say uh, P0 here lives in in, in an area where mu and nu are zero. P1 might be mu equals zero and nu equals one and so on. So I need two more points to control the whole thing here and to solve um, for all the six unknown vectors. 
So if I substitute these values in, if I substitute the values for mu and nu in to the patch equation, it gives me uh, six equations here, right? So the first is very familiar again, or zeros, this is just f, the vector f, and that down to the sixth ones where I get these. So the p's here are unknown. So we can solve for all of these unknown and later at this point, I think most people would actually start to implement that somehow and type that into MATLAB or some other so Wolfram Alpha-like solver to work out what all the individual parameters are. So and again, mu and nu are in the range between zero and one and the and, and if you now think about so if you, if you think about this patch here, really what the contours here that bound these surfaces are are something you already know from the previous lecture. They are nothing else than spline patches. So we can actually, if we substitute individually for mu zero or for nu zero in and for the other one one or, or zero, then we get what we get out here are individual spline patches here that are valid for all of the four sides of this patch. So these boundaries here, they are, they are all second order curves and they are, they are guaranteed to be smooth because I set that guarantee, right? So there is, there's quite a lot of flexibility here again in this formulation. I can again say my condition is not smoothness. My condition is probably user defined, but for now, let's just assume that we say we want to have a smooth curve where this, so C1 continuous curve where also our um first gradients the first derivatives match here so if we use now um we can we can really use any any sort of order here again as the base polynomial we can say we have a cubic polynomial here again well in this case here i uh, i just parameterize these uh with the with the three uh, polynomial parts of the higher order polynomial it, it gives us a bit more control but really the rules are the same um it's well so the, the higher order you go the higher the harder it gets to generalize this so it's really not really used you wouldn't go beyond a cubic uh, tensor product here so the patch method is generally effective in creating more uh complex surfaces and again like before the idea is as in the case of curves is, is the same as before with the with the with the with the curves that in the control points you make sure that the number of conditions are met well so the joints that for example the, the first derivative is the same um so this is the theorem but uh really what this means is again for the for the points for the joint points here I want to make sure that, uh, for example, my derivatives are, are equal. And really the nice property of uh, patches here is that since all of these boundary lines are actually uh, spline patches, we don't need to care about every single point here. We really need to, again, here only care about the uh continuity constraints at the uh control points themselves so in practice uh we use the more general parametric patch formulation with mu and nu and so something like a terrain map can be just modeled with parametric patches just from point to point to point you go on and then you get something that you can um that you can interpolate and, and zoom in basically until infinity. So what we want to match for C1 continui continuity on a surface is, uh, again, C0 continuity. We want that the points at the joints are the same. And then we want the gradients in both directions, now in the mu direction and in the new direction uh, to match. Uh, so again, we adopt the convention that the corner points are between zero and one, and we need to ensure that um, the, the, the patch joins its neighbors exactly at, at the edges, so C0 continuous. Um, yeah, so that means that the edge contours are basically the, exactly the same as the adjacent patches. So we really want something, something like this, where if I have one patch and another patch that I don't get some sort of holes in between, I really want to have them smoothly joined together uh, so that I have a continuous surface here. 
So, and really by doing this is, so we do this by designing the edge curves really identical to cubic spline curve patches, except, except that we have now many more of them. So again, we, we uh, give our points an index. Now we have two indices, we use I and J and have to, we have to solve now, like for the cubic spline patch, we have to solve now for PI and PI plus one. Now in this case, IJ, IJ plus one, I plus one, J. So all, for all of these directions, we have to solve now. And as long as the gradients are the same for the four patches that meet at the point, they, it will really join seamlessly without producing any, any holes here. So, okay, there is also a easier way to think about our patches here. And instead of working out the gradients at every uh, corner point here, I can do something that's called a Coons patch. The idea here is pretty similar uh, to uh, what we had before to simplify all of our um, surface to just uh, to just be defined by the corner points. So, so the idea here is if I know that all of these uh, boundary lines are actually 2D uh, cubic spline patches, then I could say, well, actually, a similar idea than the Bernstein blending equation. Actually, I can just blend together these cubic splines to get any point on this surface. And so I can try this and say, okay, let's let's now take a point and linearly blend them together. So like with linear blending equation, as we did before, and get every point of our Coons patch. Now, this has only one uh, very simple problem. If we now plug in uh, zeros, for example, for, for one of the parameters and try to work it out for the other parameter, then what I will, um, so let's plug in, for example, all zeros, all the mu and the nu for the, for the point zero, zero become now zero. So what, what the, will result here is P zero, zero times one. So this is P zero, zero plus so this is times zero so this goes away uh, this is one minus zero so this is also p zero zero plus so this is times zero so this goes away but what this does now is that it actually tells us that the point p mu of nu p mu and nu actually is p zero zero plus p zero zero so two times p zero zero which is obviously uh not correct Super. So the fix is relatively easy. If you think about it, the only thing we need to do is to uh, subtract the corner points. Um, let me just get rid of this here. So if you subtract the corner points, then uh, what we end up with is a correct blending equation for uh, our, our Coombs patch. Uh, so we only can be defined as simply by the corner points and the uh, the cubic spline patches uh, and interpolate them together to get these surface points. So to render uh, such a patch is actually not as trivial as before. So in the 2D case, it was just rasterization, right? We, we worked out for every pixel if that pixel is on the line or not, and then we draw it or not. Uh, in the 3D case, <coughs> in the 3D case, it's slightly more complicated. Um, but one way to go about this is probably the easiest is polygonalization. So we just select a grid of mu's and nu's and go in regular distances on that surface, define points here and triangulate this grid. So this just gives us an approximation of the underlying continuous surface with uh, partly linear uh, segments like triangles, for example. So this looks like this. Um, to speed up the rendering process, we can use um, hierarchical representations and do uh, larger polygons for areas of so rougher approximations for areas that are further away. and. Uh, and more fine-grained, which are which are closer. So this is quite an overhead uh, calculation-wise. Also, if you 
think about the overhead that would cause in, uh, for example, Ray Tracer, the bounding volume hierarchy here would be quite, quite complex. There used to be techniques to do it with, with something called lofting, where you just connect all the points that draw your grid. So it's basic, basically um, a wireframe. So ray tracing, unfortunately, for a, for a Coons patch, there is no closed form solution for that. So I cannot simply take a line in parameterized form and this parameterization here and set them equal to find the intersections. Also, there can be um, there can be multiple intersections, and it's quite difficult to actually work out what the actual intersection point would be. So we can use numeric algorithms, but computation can be pretty pretty costly for those uh, for these patches to work out something that would work with ray tracing. So numerically, some one algorithm would probably look like this. I can polygonize the whole thing. So I have lots of triangles. I calculate the ray intersection with the 32 triangles um, nearest and find... Uh, so I calculate the ray intersection with, say, 32 triangles and find the nearest intersection with these. And then I polygonize the immediate area um, of the intersection and calculate a better estimate of the of the intersection. So I first start with a four by four grid of triangles. Then the closer I get, so the first intersection will hit one of these 32 triangles, then in this triangle I do another final grid and a final grid and a final grid. So this is a, a kind of bounding, a kind of volume hierarchy or kind of surface hierarchy on its own. So this is one way to do it. And well, again, there might be multiple intersections and with the rain the, and the surface and the, um, algorithm that when well, we will find an intersection, but not necessarily the nearest, right? I actually would need to work out for all the intersections all the time uh, what is the nearest. And this is again very, very costly. So, and if the object is relatively smooth, it should uh, work well in most cases. I would say smooth and stretched out, uh, very, very um, well crinkled objects, for example, very, very texture rich surface rich microstructure rich objects might might really be problematic here okay let's do one example something that might uh, look similar to past exam questions here uh, the similarity is just a coincidence here um so let's see okay so what we have here is a terrain map and we want to find the Coons patches that is particular, the Coons patch that is defining these, this area here. So what we, what we see, the numbers here, they're just uh, fixed discrete coordinates. So we could say these are the corner points. Okay. So the question is find the Coons patch on center four points so these four good okay so the corner points zero zero one zero zero one and one one are already given here in um in this question then the way to read this is we here we have mu here we have nu and well through plane so in this direction or in the grid here we have the uh the, the height of this of this uh, of this point right kind of set coordinate if you want so 12 here means it comes 12 out of this surface here so the plane says now mu and nu and if we want to read for example p 0 0 so this here is p 0 0 now let's do the entire let's do the entire so this pixel here or this voxel is p 0 0. Um, so how do we read this? So we first read x, first curve, mu, so this. We just say that mu and nu is parallel here, right? So that's x. y or nu is 4, this one. And the set coordinate is 12. Okay, so this is our, this is our grid. And by chance, it's parallel with mu and nu and also to make things easier. Let's do another one. Um, P 
zero one is this one so this is p zero one that one so it's at nine five and eleven okay so now these are our four points for this coons patch and our task is to work out how this two coons patch looks like now the first thing i need are gradients in mu and nu direction now mu and nu is equivalent to x and y in our case here so this makes things a little bit easier and again like with the cubic spline patches i use central differences so what i want is <clears throat> that point say zero zero with respect to mu so that direction <clears throat> which means the central difference here is that that point i think 10 4 13 so that point minus 8 4 10 minus that point so this is this averaged is our central difference which gives us our gradient vector in mu direction at that point okay so we can do this for all directions here for mu so these are all four points zero zero one zero zero one and one one for mu i can do the same thing for nu zero zero one zero zero one and one one it's just vector vector uh vector <laughs> uh differences here so now and the only thing i need to do is to find these uh boundary coons patches which uh for which i know how to solve that by uh this matrix right uh, this is i know is my solution for my coons uh patch this is the solution to a cubic polynomial here so i can just basically plug them in i know p0 i know p prime zero i know p1 and i know p1 uh p prime one so now i do this and substitute substitute in and then i get uh well, if I substitute now the real values in here for, for my points, for example, for mu zero here, then I can work out my parameter vectors here and, and get the uh, constant vectors a3 to a0 here, which are in this case, uh, this, uh, this, this, and that. Okay, and this is, with that, I can find any point on my boundary uh curve p mu zero so for all the others i can find them identically to p mu zero so for p mu one for p zero nu and for p one nu i can find all the other points in the same way and then i can use the coons patch and i just plug into the coons patch uh our mu and nu and i get for every single point on the surface um uh, a real coordinate right so i can actually rasterize this now or if i just do the grid again i can polygonize it and and work out any single point but really what you need to show is that you that you know um this the order of things here and really the key idea is uh that these boundary that these boundary curves here are just interpolated to get any single point here on on the surface in a Kuhn's patch okay in a Kuhn's patch you can you can do the same thing as with uh quad cubic spline patches where you set your own conditions but here in this Kuhn's patch is really just okay we have again uh all the c1 continuous corner points so um so in this case, case here everything will be continuous and smooth no holes and so on in these conditions a coons patch works and it's just the interpolation of four individual cubic spline patches